actually want heifers? You're gonna get bulls. When you want bulls, you'll get heifers. Generally, you haven't got a clue what I'm doing. Don't tell me if I've not, because you're just not my confidence. Yeah, they're quite fat. Come on, pray for me, people, pray for me. Hello, people of YouTube. How are you all doing today? We are about to go and do something a little bit different. This is new to me, so I'm sure you'll all be able to tell me that I'm doing this completely wrong. I've got a hot water bottle in hand, which is uh, just my color. And we're heading down to do a bit of work on some cows, because some of you might remember that I was gonna AI some cows this year, which, I have done and I didn't film it because it was my first time AI and I was a little bit unsure about what I was doing and I didn't think filming it, I just didn't have enough time to like do everything so I thought I'll just concentrate on AI. That was two weeks ago and next week is the week when they are due to repeat. So what that would mean is the ones that I haven't got in calf will come back on heat because I haven't got them in calf. Now a cow cycles about every three weeks. It's kind of like 18 to 23-ish days. It's a bit of an inexact science, but generally about every three weeks. So I AI'd them two weeks ago. I need to stick on some Estratec patch things, which I've never used before as well. So we're gonna have to give a go at that. And then we'll put them out to grass. And next week, I'm kind of hoping we don't get any. Realistically, I don't want this to work. I don't want any of them to come bull in, but we're likely to find a few and then we can AI them as they come into heat and hopefully catch them second time round. Those of you who haven't watched this channel before, and I think there might be a few of you because I've had a couple of thousand new subscribers, which I'm very grateful for, so thank you every single one of you. Won't know, but I have a herd of stabilizer cattle and I wanted to AI those guys because I wanted to get some heifers. Now, last year I put a stabilizer bull to 42 cows and heifers with the idea of getting some replacement. And I also bought five in-calf heifers that were already in-calf to a stabilizer bull. So I was thinking, you know, we've got like 40 odd, nearly 50 cows in-calf to a stabilizer. We'll keep all of the decent heifers that come out of those so that we've got some replacements for next year. And what actually happened was I ended up with, I think 13, 13 heifers. Everything else was bulls which is typical. When you actually want heifers, you're gonna get bulls. When you want bulls, you'll get heifers. And that is why this year we've decided to AI because we're AI into some sex semen, a bull called Overcoat Wolfgang, who looks an absolute peach, to be honest. And I bought all my gear. Look, I've got all the gear and no idea. I've got this proper cool box. I got it from Cogent. If you've ever used Cogent, they do all the stabilizer stuff. They're really good, actually. And they've got like a electric thora, my flask, timer, a gun, a gun warmer. Some tweezers for getting the stuff out. Everything in here comes in that real sweet looking box, which I was really impressed with. Also, my good friends at Pasture Tech have sorted me out with these Estratech patches, which I really appreciate. It's the first time I've used these, and I went for like a yellow, because my cows are red. I thought that would stand out well. I, I, I'm a novice at this. I generally haven't got a clue what I'm doing. I think I need to warm these up just to get them a bit stickier. So I'm gonna put these on the hot water bottle, and then we're gonna get the cows in and stick them on, I think, I hope. There's 17 a pack of these, which is quite good really, because I mean, I won't have to buy any more <laughs> for a while anyway. The plan is that I'm only gonna give these guys two shots of AI. So they've had the first shot, I synchronize them. I don't know if you know what that means. If you don't, it's effectively a way of like artificially getting them all to come into estrus at the same time. It was new to me. I, I won't go into it too much because there's loads of different ways of doing it. But yeah, it was a new thing that I'd never done before, but it was it was quite cool. It was relatively efficient and it, you know, it definitely worked. They were definitely bullying. So now the plan is to give them a shot the second time round, just through using the patches, they've got one more grazing down away from home and then they can come and be at the side of the drive next to the yard. Can we also appreciate these calves? I'm just gonna show you these calves. They're like March and April born calves. They're just absolutely massive. Look at them. When I say massive, I don't mean like massive, muscly, huge, whatever. They're just impressive. They're just doing so well. A few heifers in here as well, because I've just lumped them all together. Once these guys have been AI'd second time round, I'll just introduce the bull in with the heifers and they can all go in together. All right, keep calm, keep calm. Right, let's take these up to the cattle crush then and we can see if we can work out how to do this whole thing. Right, so I've got a cow in. My mum sorted me out with this brush. So we'll see what we can do. So it's to brush it, wipe it, stick it. Brush it. I think she's enjoying this. Get all that off. Got to wipe it. And now for the tricky bit, I've got to like peel this off here and I've got to stick it halfway between here and the hips. 
So I'm thinking like there. If they all go that way, we won't be long. Looks about right, I think. Right, so that's all these girls sorted, ready to go back out to grass. I'm hoping I've done that right. I think, from what the instructions said, it looks about right. Um, I might not be done it right. Don't tell me if I've not, because you're just not my confidence. <laughs> but, I'm, uh, yeah. So we'll stick these down the field. Dad's just turned up now, so we can uh, soon run them back. And then, yeah, we'll keep an eye on them. And then we'll just keep an eye out for them. And what will happen is, when they mount each other, should, wear to a nice green, yellowy green colour and we'll be able to spot them too greasy, I hope. So that's all these girls sorted, ready to go back out to grass. I'm hoping I've done that right. Don't tell me if I've not, because you're just not my confidence. Dad's just turned up now so we can uh, soon run them back. And then we'll just keep an eye out for them. Right, it's been a couple of days since I put the patches on and we've had a couple go off. I've moved the cows to the side of the drive so they're really easy to spot and easy to get around. I need to put my Thora on. It's um, it's kind of a little bit disheartening when you've tried really hard to get them come back on repeat, but like, obviously it was my first time and everything, but yeah. I was super confident after I'd done my course, like I got on really well, but these beef suckler cows are a lot more difficult than dairy cows because those dairy cows being quite thin you just find the cervix in that. There's not so much fat in there, but these things are, yeah, they're quite fat. I'm trying my best and I know that's all I can do, but I suppose I was always gonna get some repeat. It's just, let's just hope we don't get all of them. <laughs> you can see the cows now, they're just up there. So we'll have to barricade up, so I'll shut the gate and then I'll put an electric fence wire around so that it's easy for them to uh, get in. And they don't tend to bother the electric fence wire. With rotational grazing, they just they seem to respect the wire, which is good. Fingers crossed, it'll go okay. Right, so I've got that sorted. Hopefully they should walk straight in. And I know what you're thinking, Keith. I am still wearing vests. I haven't got the pink one on. Now, now it's got hot, I've not ruled out wearing it because it is hot. It is really hot again today. I've decided to go and shear some sheep for the neighbor this week. <sighs> it's a silly idea, it's always hot when I go there. You can see these couple of heifers here, they've gone off. See the patches? See how they're so green? Heifers are hard work. If you never AI'd a heifer, it's not the same as a cow. <laughs> Fairly confident with those two that we were in the right spot. Heifers are generally a little bit harder because they're 
everything's so much smaller. It's somehow cows, their cervixes get bigger and it's easier to find. But um, I got there in the end, which is good. I haven't put any more stickers on them because obviously they're still going to be in heat and still going to be mounting them. Come on, pray for me people, pray for me. Right, we'll take these back out of the field and they can go and have some of the fresh grass. For those of you who hadn't worked out already, if you've not seen on Instagram, we did buy the Corv horse. Every good cowboy should have a horse and ours is the Corv horse. And Dad's made this rack for it now. So on the back, putting all our wire reels. So it's this big frame, goes up and over the top. You can hook the wire reels in there, as you can see. Yeah, your demo for you. Oh, so they are, they just hook in there and they sit on this bar. So we can carry six. We've got three on this side, three on that side, but you can't see because he's got a fence panel thing in a minute. And then to wind them up, he's made this little contraption here. So it swings out and then butts against there and then somehow it hooks in. I've not actually seen this working yet. It sits in there like that, you see. And you can put your hand on there, you can wind that one. And obviously the strain just keeps that folded out, which is quite good because we had it on the old Polaris on a sort of bracket here, which was fine, but you just had to be careful you didn't wang it too much because you could have bent it. Spring bolt latches back. Now we're on these Gallagher ring top posts. We're thinking about making some sort of a slotted, I don't know what you call it, like a rack. So they sit in nice and tidy, but we haven't quite got around to working that bit out yet. And then we'll add that on, but it's good, it's smart. Yeah, we're gonna have a dog box in the middle. That's the next job. Mr. Catley's also put our big light on the top for us, which is good. And we've got obviously the obligatory ramp on the front for getting over the top and dad likes his flip out window because now it's got really hot he can drive around with his window open and he doesn't sweat we're actually having a half door to put on this side so that when we're fencing we don't actually have to have the door open we can just put the fences up and lean out the door actually what i think about it the corvus we've had now for about five weeks i think and dad has this morning clocked over a thousand miles in it and it's been really good like not had any problems with it so far so it's safe to say so far the corvus is a really good bit of kit well worth looking at if you're thinking of swapping a buggy i'm gonna get tidied up now because we're gonna go and weigh some bulls before we do anything else i have actually got some battle of the breeds news for you that i have filmed that i will probably stick together in a fresh video it's getting spicy we're getting to the spicy end of the whole deal right now and it's uh it's interesting right i'm gonna go up and get out of these leggings because i'm sweating like theresa may in a field of wheat whatever you get up to this weekend have a great one pray for me that those cows have all got in calf look after yourselves stay hydrated because it's bloody boiling and i will see you in a bit Ta-da!